of deadly pestilence for good purpose. Make use of the season of deadly pestilence for good purpose. Amen. So when I think about uh, this words, the pestilence means in Malayalam it is Mahamari. So we, I'm, I just want to, I have uh, many points to uh, share with you, but I would like to uh, make it short, uh, maybe with the uh, uh, with the three points. So uh, actually, I have uh, uh, almost five, six points are there, but uh, I'll be speaking only uh, from only only three points or something. So let us all come to that portion. You know, when we read Psalm number ninety-one, verse three, Psalm number ninety-one, verse three, it says like this: He delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. I mean, he delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. Hallelujah. So that is a, that, 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 I mean, uh, that word speaks about the, the deadly pestilence. You know, uh, today we understand that even, even uh, when uh, Rajit was speaking from the Psalms, he also was sharing about uh, uh, the, the afflictions and the problems that which is happening outside. You know, uh, here we can understand that God is delivering the people of God from all the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. Amen. So at the same time, we have to understand we have the protection from the Lord. We have the protection from the Lord. At the same time, you know, I would like to speak about how can we make use of this season of deadly pestilence for good purpose. You know, most of the people are worried about the coronavirus and everything. You know, I know that. We all are aware about all those things. But this morning, I'm just going to speak something about what is the plan of God? What is the plan of God about the believers of God when we go through all these calamities or the pestilence or the pa pandemic diseases or something? You know, we are sitting in the presence of God. We are going to think about what is the God's plan? You know, when you read uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 28, you know, you, you remember that uh, we, we have been talking about uh, uh, the, 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 the power and the importance of the uh, blood of the uh, lamb, the Passover lamb, and uh, all those things we were, uh, we were just discussing in the previous weeks. And also, we have been dis discussing about uh, 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 that God is able, God is able to do the miracles. At the same time, this morning, I would like to read that, uh, that Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It says like this, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. God, we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. We have to think about two things from that verse, that we are the people, we are called by God, and we are, we, we are loving God, and also we are called by according to his purpose. So we are the people of God, and we are the children of God, and we are called according to his purpose. So we are the people of God by the calling of God. And we have the calling that God has a purpose about every person. God has a purpose about every believer, every child of God. So we are looking into that portion that what is the purpose of God? What is the plan of God about all those things about the, the, the believers of God? You know, we understand from this portion that everything works together for good. So whatever happens in our life, there is no problem. So we are supposed to be subjected to the problems. At the same time, we are supposed to be submitted in the presence of God. Let anything happen in this world. Let anything happen for the people. But what is our aim? What is our purpose? And what is the plan of God from our life? Hallelujah. So everything will be working together for the good of the people, those who are called according to his purpose and those who love God. This morning, let me encourage you that everyone, everyone, we are loving God and God loves us. At the same time, we are called for a purpose. God has a purpose about every person. So we are looking into that portion. 
and you know sometimes you know uh, when we we know that we well we are i mean aware about all the seasons and all these things you know and we know that uh, this is a season of i mean you can call it as a pandemic diseases maybe pagarsavyadi so we have the many many people are affected by the pandemic diseases maybe this is the season of the disasters and maybe this is the season of the pestilence and this is the season uh, of calamities and the season of many tragedies and so on so many things are happening outside you know all these things are happening outside in among the people at the same time you know many people ask a question that why god allows all these problems and painful situation to happen among the people you know some people this is a question from many people why god if god is alive if god is almighty i mean if god is a loving father then why god is allowing all these problems and all these disasters and all these pandemic diseases and all these calamities or all the tragedies among the people you know many have many answers in this space many people are giving their own answers their own opinion their own ideas that why god is allowing all these problems i mean in among the people you know there are many answers from the people some says this is the judgment of god okay some says this is a judgment of god some says this is the punishment of god for the sins of the people this is the punishment for the for, for the people those were sinning and some says this is the wrath of god and some says this is the vengeance of god and some says this is the satanic attack so some of the people they are always blaming god accusing god for sending all these problems in this life in, in this i mean world you know there are many people those who were i mean trying to find out what is the reason what is the reason of this pestilence what is the reason of this disease and what is the reason of uh, this calamities and tragedies which is happening in the life of the people but we have to understand one thing that you know, we are not to we are not supposed to i mean find out what is the reason of this problem we are not going to find out what is the reason of this problem the people some people says that this is a judgment of god there will be no problem some people say that uh, this is the punishment of god for the sin of the people some people say that okay this is the satanic attack okay but well, let me tell you one thing you know i i've been just hearing uh, the 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 uh, youtube messages or facebook messages from uh, many uh, preachers and prophets you know these days many preachers and prophets they are trying to uh, trying to become famous through uh, the online preaching and prophesying and uh, uh, through the facebook about the corona virus and covid 19 you know i've been uh, just hearing many messages many prophecies from the people that those people are just trying to become famous among the people you know they want to become famous they are speaking something okay they they, they find out something they discover something and they are saying okay this is the reason of this covid 19 but this morning let me encourage everyone this morning that we are not trying to i mean i mean get to do that portion but we are trying to i mean make use of this season for a good purpose hallelujah how can we make use of this season for a good purpose okay the people are just i mean running after the reason of the problems the reason of the i mean diseases the reason of the pandemic diseases or pestilence or something but now we are planning to i mean have that portion that what is the god's plan about a believer what is the plan of god about a christian i mean when we are going through all these problems you know so many times the people are fed up with all these uh, i mean ideas and opinions and everything you know to be frank i am fed up i am fed up i don't know why these people are always running after the after these things that they are asking all those questions and ask they are just finding out many things i don't know what is the reason for that hallelujah but we are going to look at on what is the plan of god about our life in this pandemic situation so let us know what is his purpose is and let us make use of the season to be more useful for the kingdom of god hallelujah that is what my subject is called the title is called like this make use of the season of deadly pestilence for good purpose okay so let us come to that point the first point is this is not the time to accuse or blame others this is not the time to accuse or blame others 
You know, nowadays, many are blaming others that because of you, that this is happening. Okay, the believers will say, because of the sin and wickedness of the unbelievers, this is happening. But I think that this is not the time to blame others, but the time for our repentance. Hallelujah. So I believe that this season is given by God for the people of God to, to repent themselves. To repent themselves. You know, we are sitting inside the house. This is a good time. This is an opportunity for the people of God to I mean, think about yourself, think about ourselves. And this is not the time to accuse or blame others. Many people are accusing, blaming, and this because of you people, this is happening. You know, the believers will, I mean, I mean, just uh, make a blame upon the people, unbelievers that, okay, oh, oh, you are the unbeliever, you don't believe in God, you are an atheist, and because of you only, this is happening. So you are living in sin and you are doing wicked things and all. So that's the reason that God is allowing all these pestilence and all these I mean, diseases among the people. So we are always blaming others. We are trying to judge others. And we are saying that this is the reason. You are the reason. You are the reason for this problem. But in this morning, let me encourage everyone that let us make this situation let us make this season as uh, for for ours our own i mean repentance we are most of the time we are not i mean able to i mean surrender our life we are not able to i mean repent about our sins and our wickedness but we are blaming others because of you because of you this is happening you know let us read luke chapter 13 verse 5 luke chapter 13 verse 5 jesus said i tell you the truth unless you repent you all will perish likewise. Luke chapter 13 verse 5 says, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, unless you repent, you all will perish likewise. I mean, when you read verse 1, verse 1, you can see the, so the, see the incident there, what is happening there, the history of that background of uh, that uh, verse 5, it is in verse 1. Some people are bringing a report to Jesus about an incident. Verse 1 says, some people are bringing a report to Jesus about an incident. What is the incident? They are trying to blame Pilate and the people of Galilee. They are trying to blame Pilate and the people of Galilee. But in verse 2, Jesus replied, do you think that all the Galileans are sinners? The question. Jesus is asking a question. In verse 2, Jesus replied, do you think that all the Galileans are sinners? You know, the people are asking a question to Jesus that, and they are blaming Pilate and the people of Galilee that because of them, they are sinners. They are sinners. That's the reason that this is happening. But Jesus is, I mean, replying as an, as a, as a, as an answer that, do you think that all the Galileans are sinners? Okay, then he said in verse 3, you don't try to blame others unless you repent, you will perish. I mean, so this, you know, in within these five verses, we understand that twice Jesus is repeat, repeating the same verse. You know, verse three, Jesus said, you don't try to blame. You are blaming others. You are judging others and you are accusing others. But you don't blame others for this problem unless you repent, you will perish. But again, in verse four, Jesus is reminding, verse four, Jesus is reminding about the tragedy which happened in Silo. Jesus is, I mean, reminding a tragedy which happened in Silo, that the tower fell down and 18 people were killed. Tower fell down and 18 people were killed. And asking a question that, do you think that the 18 people were worse culprits than the other people? Hallelujah. What a, what a wonderful question it is. You know, Jesus is asking to those people that, and asking the question that, do you think that the 18 people were worse culprits than the other people? And again, in verse 5, Jesus said, Jesus said in verse 5, I tell you the truth, unless you repent, you all will perish likewise. Hallelujah. You know, this is part of the, 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 the response of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is responding to the, to the, to the question of the people in a different way. Okay, the, the people or the disciples were trying to make, I mean, use of that season to blame others. They were spending time to blame others. 
They were trying to blame uh, the, the people of Galilee. And they were trying to blame, I mean, Pilate, the high priest. Okay, at the same time, Jesus is not looking into a person. Jesus is not saying that, okay, because of uh, those people, because of that, uh, I mean, the sin of 18 people, they all, I mean, destroyed and they all killed. But Jesus is saying that, okay, you don't look into that person or this person or about the sin of that person, but you think about yourself. If you are not repentant, you all will perish likewise. Hallelujah. This morning, let me encourage you and I urge you, every children of God, hallelujah, we are not supposed to judge others. We are not supposed to, I mean, I accuse the people other people but we are some i mean we are supposed to look it look into our own life and say that oh lord i need the repentance oh lord i come to your presence and i repent about my sin hallelujah when some evil things or bad things or tragedy happens into somebody's life if the people will really say that this is only because of his fault or his sin or because he is not a righteous person he is not an upright person so most of the time what that is happening you know, there are many, many things happening in the, in the life of the people. You know, sometimes the evil things will be happening. Sometimes uh, the bad things will be happening. You know, in that time, we the people of God, we the believers, we the Christians, sometimes we will say that only because of your fault, that because of your sin, that this is happening. Because you are not a righteous person. Okay, because you are not a righteous person. You are not, a, uh, you are not an upright person. You are not right and you are not correct in the presence of God. That's the reason that you are facing all these problems. Hallelujah. And at the same time, I mean, this morning, we have to understand that Jesus is always, I mean, telling us that you don't judge others. You don't accuse others. Even if you are facing a problem, they are facing a problem. But that is not because of them that is happening there is a plan and there is a purpose among all the problems which is happening in this world. You know, for example, the, the life of Job, Job and his tragedy. We know what was the tragedy that uh, in, the, in the life of Job. Okay, you know, when we read the book of Job, we say, we see there that uh, uh, some of his friends coming to him while he was in suffering. Job lost everything. So when Job lost everything, some of his friends are coming to comfort Job. You know, he lost everything means he lost his health, he lost his wealth, and he lost his sons and daughters, he lost his servants. I mean, even everything, everything, he lost everything. He was in a situation which, which nobody can help him. Hallelujah. So at the same time, the friends of Job, they are coming to comfort Job. At the same time, even his wife also said, curse God and die. You know, what, a, what, a, what a pathetic situation it is, you know, when it is happening in our life also, sometimes we also will be, I mean, disgraced and we will, I mean, we will try to curse God and we'll, we'll, we'll try, okay, I, I just want to die, that's all. Is it right? So we understand here that his wife, even his wife said that, curse God and die, that is good for you. You are always, I mean, clinging upon the promises of God. You are always I mean, trusting in the Lord. Then why you, it is happening in your, in your personal life. So because of that, you know, Job, when, he, when we read that all those things, we understand his friends came to comfort him. But afterwards, they started to accuse him and said, Hey, Job, it is because of your sin and wickedness that you are suffering a lot. Now, the comforters of Job became the accusers. The comforters of Job became accusers. That is what we understand from this portion. You know, those people, those friends, they came to, I mean, I mean, uh, 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 bless the uh, man of God, Job. They came to comfort the, the man of God. At the same time, here, the, the entirely different, I mean, a situation is there. Those people are trying to accuse Job and saying that only because of your sin, only because your unrighteousness, I mean, this is happening. Hallelujah. And they are trying to I mean, judge Job at the same time. This morning, you know, let me let me encourage you that. Let us think about ourselves. Many times we are not spending time to think about ourselves. Okay, so we are not ready to repent about our sins. We are not, uh, I mean, we are not able to, I mean, I mean, think about and self-examine a soul. I mean, uh, we are not able to, I mean, submit ourselves in the mighty heart of God. But this morning, let 
me, I mean, encourage everyone uh, through this verse that okay, we are supposed to, I mean, know the plan of God in our life uh, in, when we are facing the tragedy or disaster or pandemic situation or diseases. Hallelujah. So this is the first point that I want to, I mean, make it clear that whenever we go through the problems, when we're, whenever we go through the tragedy, whenever we go through the, I mean, pandemic situation, okay, pandemic diseases or something, okay, there will be some, I mean, pestilence that we read in uh, Psalms uh, 91 verse 3. Okay, God is there to deliver the people of God from all the deadly pestilence. That is true. At the same time, we should learn something out of this season. Okay, this is the season which uh, the, the, the people, okay, the, the, the only people cannot do anything. They cannot do anything. The government cannot do anything. Amen? The police cannot do anything. But at the same time, God is in control and God knows everything and God has a plan about the people of God. Hallelujah. God has a plan about the people of God. That is, that is not to accuse others. That is not to I mean, blame other people, but you think about yourself. Let us all think about ourselves. Let us all self-examine our life. Hallelujah. And let us surrender in the presence of God. Let us repent about our sins and wickedness. Hallelujah. So this is the time for self-examination. Hallelujah. So let us make use of this season. Let us make use of this season to understand what is the plan about the believers of God. And let us surrender our life in the presence of God. Let us repent about our sins and I mean, surrender our life in the presence of God. Secondly, secondly, this is for the glory of God. This is for the glory of God. I mean, when we think about, we have, we have many examples that uh, we can take from uh, from Bible. You know, this is for the glory of God means, you know, when the people are going through the problems, when the people are in affliction, when the people are going through the, I mean, the, the dangerous situation, we have to understand that everything is for the glory of God. I believe personally that whatever happens in my life, whatever happens in the life of a person, in, of a believer, there is the plan of God. Let God's name be glorified through all the problems and all the situations in this life. Praise God. Example number one. Example number one. John chapter 9 verses 1 to 3. John chapter 9 verses 1 to 3. It says that, Jesus heals the blind man from birth. The blind man is blind from his birth. But Jesus is going there and Jesus is healing the person, the blind man. You know, the disciples of Jesus is asking a question, Rabbi, who sinned this man? Okay, it is there in the verse, verse maybe one or two. Okay, Rabbi, who sinned this man or his parents that he is born blind? Amen. So they have a question. They have a question. What is the question? What is the question? Rabbi, who sinned? Because of who sin that this man is born blind? Is it because of his sin or because of the sins of the parents? Okay, but here is the answer. Jesus said, Jesus said, it is neither that this man sinned nor his parents, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Hallelujah. What is the meaning of that words? Hallelujah. Jesus is giving a clear answer for the question of disciples. What was the question? Oh, Rabbi, Rabbi, is it, is it because of his sin or his parents' sin that he is born blind? But Jesus is, I mean, giving the clear answer for that question that it is neither that this man sinned, nor his parents, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Hallelujah. Many times, I mean, the, the works of God, the glory of God should be displayed through, through, the, through the, I mean, life of a believer. But most of the time, we are not ready for that. We are not ready for that. But Jesus is looking always. God Almighty is looking always for a believer, for a man of God, that the glory of God should be I mean, expressed through and displayed through that person. But sometimes we are not ready for that. Hallelujah. But here we can understand that this man, the blind man, became blind by his breath only because of the glory of God. Amen. So when he is getting healed, the name of the Lord will be 
glorified. When he is getting healed, the name of the Lord will be glorified. That's the reason that Jesus said this is only for the glory of God. The second, uh, the second, uh, I mean, uh, example is in John chapter eleven, verse four. <clears throat> John chapter eleven, verse four. There, Jesus said, Jesus said, this sickness is not to end in death, but for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Once again, I read that verse. This sickness is not to end in death, but for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. You know, this chapter is saying about the death and resurrection of Lazarus. Okay, this, this chapter, the, the entire chapter, I mean, uh, chapter, John chapter 11 uh, speaks about uh, the, 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 the death and the resurrection of Lazarus. You know, the death of Lazarus was a tragedy for the family, for the family. He had two sisters, Mary and Martha. At the same time, their brother, their brother, Lazarus was sick and sisters are sending messages to Jesus and saying, Lord, you have been loved. The person, Lazarus, whom you loved too much, okay, he is sick. But Jesus did not go to that house. We understand, here is the problem, the tragedy is happening. So the sisters, Martha and Mary, they were always trusting in Lazarus, that they were thinking that, okay, if this Lazarus is blown up and he will be looking after the family, they don't, they, they don't have anybody. Okay, we don't read anything about their parents or their relatives, but we read that in that family, only Lazarus, Mary and Martha lived there. But at the same time, you know, when the Lazarus is died, or Lazarus is sick, so they are trusting in Jesus and sending the messengers to Jesus and saying that, you have beloved Lazarus. The Lazarus whom you loved too much he is sick. But Jesus still staying there where he was. And in verse, uh, verse 5 says, Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Still he is staying in that place few more days. This is an amazing verse, I think, you know. Verse 5 says that Jesus loved Martha, Lazarus, Mary. Still, he is staying that place for a few more days. How can it happen? You know, if Jesus is loving the people, if Jesus is caring for the people, if Jesus, I mean, feel that, okay, this family is a good family and I should love them and I should go there and I should I mean, care for them and I, I should heal Lazarus. But here we can understand that even though he got the he got the report and he got the I mean information that Lazarus, whom he loved, is sick. At the same time, he is trying to stay there in the same place for a few more days. When he reached Lazarus' home, if we read that, when he reached Lazarus' home, he that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. You know, he reached to that house. At the same time, when he reached there, he came to know that already Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. But we understand he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Then Lazarus came out. Hallelujah. What a wonderful I mean, situation it is. You know, when he was sick, Jesus knew that. Okay, Jesus knew that. But at the same time, Jesus said, no, we have to understand that this is, Jesus said that, okay, this is for the glory of God. And when, I mean, he is sick, and we, when uh, Lazarus is died, Jesus, the answer of last, I mean, Jesus is, this is for the glory of God. Hallelujah. So Jesus came to that place in due time, in right time, and saying that, okay, this is what I understand, and God is going to do the miracle for the glory of the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Most of the time, I mean, we understand, we believe, and we think about the things, okay, why this is happening, why this is happening, why the tragedy is happening in the house of God, why the tragedy is happening in the life of a person, of a believer. Hallelujah. We have to understand that God is looking for the right time. God is looking for the right time. He is working. He is doing the miracle. He is doing Due time, hallelujah. Every every day we have to think about what God wanted to do in our personal life. Hallelujah. And example number three. Example number three. John chapter two. John chapter two speaks about the miracles of God, the miracle of God, the first miracle of Jesus Christ, changing the water into wine. This is the example number three. 
the first example was John chapter 9, verses 1 to 3. Jesus heals the blind man, and uh, it was, I mean, he was from his birth, he was blind. Second example was John chapter 11, verse 4. Jesus said, the sickness is not the means, the, the death and the resurrection of Lazarus. And the third example is in John chapter 2 speaks about the miracle of Jesus, the first miracle of Jesus changing the water into wine. You know, during the time of wedding, we understand from that verses, we understand that the wine poured over and Mary, the mother of Jesus, comes and says, they have no wine. There is a problem, there is a problem in that wedding house. What is that? Mary, the, the, the mother of Jesus, I mean, uh, coming to Jesus and saying that, that, that there is no wine. The wine got over. But Jesus said, my hour has not come. But later, Jesus said, you fill the six water pots with water, and then the water changes into wine. Hallelujah. So what is happening there? You know, this is a, this is a shameful situation. This is a shameful situation uh, for, for the family which the wedding was occurring. So when the wine got over, people might have mocked them. Okay, and uh, the people might have said, okay, what, 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 what kind of family this is? Okay, they don't have enough wine for the people to give. Okay, they are coming for the wedding, but he is, they are not giving the wine for the people. You know, it, it's a shameful situation for the, for the wedding house. At the same time, Jesus came there and Jesus is doing a miracle in writing and glorifying the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So that is what we understand. You know, when the family was going through the shameful situation, at first Jesus said, this is not my time. My hour is not yet come. So I will do the miracle when the, when, the, when the father is giving the permission for to do the miracle. So Jesus was never doing any miracle for his own glory. But Jesus was doing the miracle I mean, when the, the situation is like that and when, when it is needed, when it is urgent. Okay, so this morning also, when something is happening around us and when something is i mean something is happening i mean without our expectation we have to think about what is the reason of that what is the reason of that this problem what is the reason of this uh, i mean thing but we have to understand that what is the god's plan about uh, the people of god uh, this morning hallelujah i would like to i mean close with uh, only two points because uh, i mean hallelujah so it will take uh, i mean uh, more, more time for i mean finishing all the points and all i'll be i mean speaking from this i mean uh, same uh, topic i mean uh, maybe uh, next week hallelujah if god allows hallelujah anyway we have been thinking about uh, I mean, what is what is the plan of god uh, i mean through our life hallelujah so we have to make use of the season so uh, the many people are saying that okay god is allowing this and uh, this is the reason and this is the reason of this one but uh, we are supposed to i mean join together and remember everything work together for good for those who love him one second everyone i request everyone to close your eyes hallelujah everyone close your eyes in the presence of god and find out find out what is the plan of god about my life what is the purpose of god about my life hallelujah let us apply the word of god this morning in our personal life hallelujah sometimes and most of the time we are trying to judge others we are trying to accuse other people and we are trying to blame other people i mean for because of these problems which is happening outside but at the same time this is the time for every person to remember everything worked together for good for those who love him. Hallelujah. If you are loved by God and if you love God and if you are called by the purpose of God, I mean, everything will be working together for the good, for the good. Hallelujah. We have a good purpose. God has a good purpose. Hallelujah. So we are supposed to use the time. We are supposed to use the season for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Do not accuse and do not others when we go through the I mean, disasters or the tragedy but we are supposed to repent ourselves mm. repent about our sins hallelujah and think about our own I mean fault think about our own mistakes and think about our sin think about our wicked ways hallelujah and repent and say to the Lord Lord I'm coming to your presence I don't want to judge others I don't want to blame others I don't want to know the reason of these problems which is happening outside but I'm here to surrender my personal life in the presence of God I'm taking time to come closer unto the Lord and examine self-examine myself of God hallelujah let us all I mean let, let everything I mean 
happen for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Let everything happen for the glory of God. Hallelujah. There are many questions around. Hallelujah. Many people are asking many questions for the people of God. When why this is happening? Why this is happening? Many preachers and many prophets are I mean, prophesying and preaching their own ideas about what is going to happen. But we do not know accurately what is going to happen. But we know one thing that God has a plan and God has a purpose about the people of God. Hallelujah. So this morning, let's all surrender life to the presence of God. Hallelujah. Let us realize what is the plan of God about our personal life. Hallelujah. Let's sit in the presence of God. Let us hear from the word of God. Let us hear I mean, the voice of God through the messengers of God, the voice of God through the, I mean, preachers and the prophets. I mean, what is the plan and purpose of God about every person, every believer this morning? Hallelujah. That's all. I mean, submit us with the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, as we are, as we all are sitting in the presence of God with the prayerful attitude and worshiping mind. And I, I, we would like to sing one Tamil song now. We would like to sing one Tamil song. Uh, mm -hmm. Vadai Undan Kuda. Are a 